everybody. Uh, my name is Simone Bosetti. I'm part of the Civitas Wiki project and I'm the moderator of the Integrated Planning Thematic Group. Uh, welcome to everybody to this uh, webinar today. Uh, let me uh, first of all uh, explain and give you some words about uh, Civitas. What is Civitas for the ones that may not uh, know uh, already this initiative. Uh, well, Civitas is uh, uh, maybe the, the biggest uh, EU-funded initiative for uh, urban mobility in European cities. Uh, it was launched in uh, 2002, uh, so more than 12 years of uh, uh, initiative. Uh, now the fourth is e edition is, is running. Uh, mainly Civitas is about uh, developing, testing and evaluating uh, integrated sets of measures and policies. This is the core and the, the funding nature of the initiative. But uh, based on the knowledge uh, in, in the years, uh, Civitas is becoming more and more also an initiative to disseminate the knowledge and the experiences collected and analyzed so far in order to uh, provide ins to replicate the successful measures in uh, all the cities across Europe. Because uh, the knowledge collected so far is very relevant. I mean, uh, more than 700 measures has been collected in, uh, by 60, 60 uh, demonstrating cities. Uh, within the Civitas Initiative, uh, and there are a number of uh, events of organizations and structures and thematic groups are one of them. Basically, uh, a thematic group is a group of practitioners uh, working on uh, a specific topic regarding uh, urban mobility. Uh, so far there are 10 act active thematic groups. The integrated planning one is one of them. Each group uh, has a thematic moderator, myself in uh, this case, and uh, has a specific web section on the civitas.eu website. But what is it, a, a thematic group, and what can you uh, learn from, from it? Basically, a thematic group is a group of peers, yourself, people uh, coming from uh, uh, representing cities, both at the technical and at the political decision-making level, or academia, consulting, etc. Everybody would be interested in a specific topic and uh, that would like to get involved in activities uh, such as uh, a webinar, like this one, but also workshops, uh, study tours, uh, the annual meetings, uh, the most important important being the, the Civitas, the annual Civitas Forum Conference or peer review exercises and uh, policy analysis. Uh, of course, it is uh, being a group of peers, everybody can uh, contribute uh, by raising uh, some questions or providing um, his or her expertise and experiences and uh, this event, this webinar is uh, uh, one of the ways to, to do that. Uh, well, a few words about uh, this group that organizes the webinar, the Integrated Planning Group. Uh, there is a moderator, as I said, which is uh, the one facilitating the exchange, the debate, uh, the uh, providing answers or letting people providing answers to other people regarding a number of topics and uh, issues. The most relevant one is uh, sustainable urban mobility plans, of course, but also integrated strategies in transportation and mobility. Uh, there is also the topic of gender-sensitive approaches in uh, urban mobility planning. That was a big uh, issue and topic that has been uh, dealt uh, last year that led to a policy uh, analysis, a policy note published by Civitas, etc. Uh, below you can see the, the web address of the, where you can find everything about this group in terms of news, events, uh, resources, uh, collaborative interactions, etc. To date, uh, the group is made by 34 people. Uh, 14 are what we call uh, core members, I mean people representing uh, cities. 
plus 20 followers that may be uh, consultants or uh, people from the academia, etc. Uh, coming to the, the topic of uh, today's webinar, uh, which is mobility planning in polycentric and cross-border regions. Why we are debating about this topic today and what was the, the, the process? Well, uh, everything started by the observation that about the how CV, the, the CVTES initiative developed since the very beginning. At the beginning, uh, cities, the demonstration cities, were asked to test, demonstrate innovative transport measures that may be just independent measures. Of course, this is an added value, I mean evaluating uh, innovative measures, but uh, soon it was clear that you cannot uh, improve the uh, sustainability of mobility in your city just uh, developing and implementing single not integrated measures. And here comes the concept, the approach, the methodology of uh, sustainable urban mobility plans, uh, SUMPs, uh, that has become as a concept more and more considered across Europe and that is a way to that allows you uh, to identify, select, assess the best mix of measures, so to integrate measures. But uh, talking about integrated planning, uh, you have to consider not just the domain of mobility, but also the uh, cross-cutting uh, domains of land use, energy, and here com comes the concept, the idea of smart cities that uh, more recently started to be considered. And here we come with our uh, today's topic. Uh, when you are planning mobility in your city, probably the city boundaries, the municipal, municipal boundaries have to be overcome because dealing with mobility uh, you have to coordinate policies and services across different centers and administrative boundaries because different stakeholders, different citizens, different planners or policy makers or transport operators are involved. So there is the need to coordinate all these stakeholders and that's the main stressing point we would like to bring to your attention today. Uh, today we, you will listen and interact uh, hopefully with uh, two different experiences. Uh, two, well, actually three cities uh, that were already part of the so-called Civitas Forum Network, which are uh, Thessaloniki in, uh, in Greece, Nova, Nova Gorica in Slovenia and Gorizia in Italy. As I said, there were cities part of the Civitas Forum Network, so cities that uh, have been committing themselves to uh, sustainable urban mobility. All those two experiences uh, probably found that uh, to deal with the mobility planning, they have to overcome some boundaries. And in the first case, in the experience of uh, the Central Macedonia region in Greece, they uh, experienced the, the, a new methodology developed within the Polysamp uh, European project. While on the contrary, the twin cities, Nova Gorizia and Gorizia, experienced some new, uh, new approaches uh, within the Pumas uh, project uh, towards uh, cross-border uh, planning. So the idea is to, to listen to those two experiences and uh, uh, importantly uh, the methodology of the polysump approach will be uh, explained at the, at the beginning. So uh, coming to the agenda, as you uh, may know, after my short introduction I will leave the floor to Carlos Sessa from the Institute of Studies for the Integration of Systems. He will present and explain the polysump methodology. Uh, after him, uh, Aphrodite will uh, talk about the experience of the Central Macedonia region uh, and in the end uh, there will be the experience from Pumas by Luka Madrenovic from the Urban Planning Institutes of, of Slovenia. 
uh, that will uh, talk about uh, the experience of Nova Gorizia and Gorizia. And in the end, there will be uh, some room uh, for the interaction of the, of the participants by means of questions uh, and um, etc. A few uh, instructions to follow the webinar. Uh, to make everything work properly, only one people per time will be allowed to speak. And now, in a, in, a, in a while, I will leave the floor to to Carlo. But everybody can raise some questions by raising the hand through the GoToWebinar platform, or and or using the chat windows to provide to ask some questions. Uh, according to the number of questions, we can decide to allow some quick answers just after each contribution, each speech, or uh, to have a more uh, broad discussion at the end. If uh, with the idea to limit the duration of the webinar to just uh, one hour and uh, a quarter, um, nevertheless, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions that will be uh, answered offline in a few days by directly by the speakers and everything started from the presentations, the answers and the recording of the webinar will be made available on the link of the, this event. Um, last but not least, please uh, consider to join the thematic groups um, just uh, logging in to the web page. Okay. Thank you. I will uh, leave the floor to uh, to Carlo. Yeah, we you are Carlo. Okay, there was a problem with the audio. So, um, good afternoon to, to all. Uh, thanks, Simone, for the, the introduction. I will go uh, now to present the Polysump uh, methodology, uh, uh, starting with uh, with some um, few slides about the project. Uh, <coughs> just. Uh, so the project is uh, the project uh, under the intelligent energy action. It was handed in uh, February 2014. Uh, the, the coordinator uh, was Regione Marche, and uh, ISIS uh, was uh, project uh, technical responsible and project manager of the project. Uh, we, um, the partnership was uh, uh, including uh, 11 partners, uh, six uh, regions, and one network organization, ICLEI, and other research organizations. One of the regions is uh, well represented by the Regional Development Agency of Central Macedonia, and is today here in the webinar to present uh, their um, experience in the project. Uh, uh, I'm going to introduce first uh, the concept of polycentric city regions because this was the focus, uh, the initial focus of our project. Uh, and we say uh, that this is a territorial concept and also somehow neglected the reality in the policy because uh, in these slides the polycentric city regions are at the center of the slides. On the, on the right you have uh, uh, the distribution of population. On the other uh, side, on the left, you have the hierarchy of urban functions. The characteristic of polycentric city regions is that the urban functions are distributed in um, more cities or poles, high or middle, and not concentrated in one main central city. And this has an effect also on the distribution of the population because uh, in the monocentric city region we have a large center. We use uh, this kind of uh, heuristic rule of thumb uh, threshold of uh, consider region uh, monocentric when the capital city is more than 200,000 inhabitants, but it depends on the geographical scale. It could be also more than 100,000 in some cases. The, the basic fact is that in the monocentric cities there is a dominant cities and the other are more or less satellite. 
in the polycentric CD regions, the, the, the capital CD is not really dominant in terms of urban function or uh, population. And this has a consequence both on the mobility in the region, because people go from between cities more for exchanging, for uh, achieving uh, uh, their daily life activities, and also in terms of power. And this is the idea of neglected reality. Somehow the European Commission, uh, for example, is uh, considering policy, policies for the cities by one side or policies for the rural areas by the other side, but not so much policies as polycent for polycentric city regions because this is a reality more difficult to, to understand. Um, just to be concrete on this, uh, in the sustainable mobility planning field, uh, we have in mind the threshold of 100,000 inhabitants as a kind of a threshold considered for, for making a sustainable mobility planning necessary or usable. So the problem is that in these polycentric cities there could be a lot of citizens, but not uh, no city going up over the 100,000 threshold, and so um, sustainable mobility planning is lacking also for this uh, reason. So basically, the focus, this is another way of uh, showing the concept of polycentric cities. In this graph, we have uh, um, the concentration of population in, uh, in a different number of centers. Our areas of focus are basically this kind of city networks, where we can have more or less dominant poles. Basically, we, uh, the, the pure polycentric city region, we don't have one dominant pole, but we, uh, uh, the same methodology that I'm going to, to show can be also applied for network of cities in which there is one dominant city. So it can be applied also for functional urban regions. And we apply also this operational uh, definition to say that uh, polycentric regions are a network of medium to small towns in a relatively compact area that could be traveled within a commuting time not exceeding one hour and not dominated by large central cities. So there is basically a correspondence with the definition of daily travel of commuting, commuting areas. Um, the polysum methodology has been developed, uh, developed and tested in uh, six uh, cities, uh, in six areas, and uh, one of those areas is Central Macedonia, so you will have the possibility to hear about uh, the concrete application uh, later from, uh, from Aphrodite. Uh, what I would like to show in this very dense uh, uh, slide is uh, the stage, the stages of this methodology. The first stage is to understand the circumstances of these regions, because uh, lacking of one main center sometimes is even difficult to delimit the region. Um, for this reason, we have identified a battery of indicators of polycentricity that I will show in the next slides, and apply these indicators about uh, the distribution of settlements and the uh, mobility patterns that are typical of these regions to detect the situation in the six um, pilot test region. But uh, we identify the region not only through this territorial data, but through the concrete uh, um, landscape of the actors. Uh, and the stakeholders, uh, decision makers, municipalities, or regional stakeholders that are involved into uh, organizing uh, mobility in the region. And they are more or less aware of this. In some cases, they are concretely aware of transportation. They plan uh, mobility in their towns, but usually they do not have the vision and the scope of the regions or the responsibility for the regions for the mobility uh, pattern in the whole region. So one uh, first stage of the methodology is actually to identify these stakeholders, to identify the responsibilities, and to invite these stakeholders to the second stage, which is for creating a common ground and vision between all the stakeholders that are involved in the, in the, in the region, and uh, using uh, a methodology, which is the future search methodology, has not been invented by us. We have simply applied this methodology that has a uh, background of more than 20 years of application in several fields to the sustainable mobility planning issue. And we have experimented these future search workshops. They are a specific format of interactive workshop where the most important rule is the fact that you need to put in the room 
the world system, all the, the people in charge of responsibility concerning sustainable mobility in the polycentric uh, uh, area. And this is the most challenging thing because we need to, 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 to put these people uh, together and the quality of the uh, of all the exercises is heavily influenced by the quality and the completeness, I would say, of the group of people that is called into the process. Then uh, I will show in the in the next slides, but especially Afrogidi will uh, will show the concrete experience of uh, of a future search workshop in uh, Central Macedonia. But basically, these people is invited for three days to 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 work together to a shared diagnostic of mobility in the polycentric uh, in the polycentric uh, region uh, and. Uh, um, the vision, creating a shared vision of the future we want. So it's a normative vision, uh, based on a diagnostic of the past, the present, and the future, build uh, objectives and a vision for improving mobility in the area. And then from that, in the final part of the workshop, to build an action plan. An action plan is not a master plan according to the traditional conventional way of thinking to planning. It's really a list of actions that people in the room can commit to implement or to trigger or to initialize in, in, in somehow, but they are involved into realizing this action. Then the third stage is a stage um, of a follow-up that can last uh, 12 to 18 months or even more after this workshop because uh, the action plan becomes an event that has to be implemented in, the, in, in reality. Uh, in Polisumpo, we have done only, uh, we, we didn't have the possibility or the scope for doing really the implementation of the action plan, but we have done the analysis of barriers and drivers for action implementation in the six regions. So this is the reason why you find uh, uh, white text and then uh, yellow text below. The yellow text is something that is not being realized in Polisumpo. Building of uh, 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 after after the, uh, the Polystone uh, Future Search Workshop, and so the phases of developing packages of measure and uh, impact evaluation of the measure and develop also business model and procurement financial consideration for for um, implementation. In the next slides, I'm simply uh, continue to show the concept with the help. Uh, making reference to the more classical sustainable urban mobility planning cycle from the HELTIS uh, guidelines. This is the, the cycle of all the steps uh, from preparing, uh, goal setting, elaborating the plan, implementing the plan. And basically, PolySAMP uh, want to realize this uh, cycle not in one city, but in all uh, in a number of municipality and uh, in the area that need to coordinate some measures. So you can consider this as a kind of a metal, meta planning or identification of a measure that need to be coordinated between actions or plans that are done at the individual level in the single cities. But basically, for framing this process, we have the three stages of uh, polysamp. Uh, uh, understand uh, your region. Uh, create the common ground and vision, and then uh, the scenario development and action plan. Here, uh, with these arrows, I want to show that there is uh, uh, the, the green arrows are preparing step for understanding the region, both the territorial and mobility patterns, so data about uh, origin, destination flows, uh, commuting, commuting between the poles, so this kind of information which are the basic for planning, but also data about what are the responsibilities, the producer, the procedure, the plans that are involved and the actors. Then these are invited in the future search that is something that is very, very fast and dense in three days. These people must work together to create a common vision and an action plan in terms of concrete measures that can, could be implemented uh, after the, the workshop. Then there is again a long, a long more long process, uh, as I said, uh, between six or 18 months to, uh, to assess the measure, uh, because of course you need the filter of, uh, of a technical assessment of the feasibility uh, or um, cost-benefit ratio of the measures and all the steps of uh, implementation, uh, um, uh, gathering the funding, uh, 
uh, all, all the technical um, realization of, of the of the measure. What is important in Polish Ubuntu, what is the value added, is the fact that connects uh, people and responsibility in different municipalities. People that are not used to work together, but uh, give them the possibility of sharing an action plan and being uh, uh, organized in action groups, which are an informal kind of relationship between uh, people that is uh, in, the, uh, in different organizations. Um, what we did concretely in Polisamp uh, test in the six regions was, first of all, we applied uh, the polycentric indicators for uh, elaborating uh, these uh, profiles of polycentric city profile, and we discussed that with the six regions and with other six twin regions into uh, uh, workshops uh, about the application of this uh, um, methodology. Uh, uh, for detecting the, the, the polycentric profile. And then uh, we, we, we did uh, uh, six parallel uh, local food search workshop. We, we had the first an European workshop, food search, so all the participants have participated in this workshop and then we, they were able to replicate at the local level the, the workshop experience. And then finally, we did uh, as a follow-up activity uh, some capitalization work in terms of understanding what are the barriers for applying this food research approach and policy approach in the six regions. And based on that, on that work, we have developed uh, a set of guidelines that are available on the site. Um, uh, well, on the website, there is available also uh, uh, a benchmarking indicators tool, the tool for computing for each region that, want, that likes to compute uh, the polycentric, polycentric profile can use this application on, on the Polysum website. Basically, it is based on 10 indicators uh, 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 which uh, look at the settlement structure and the mobility patterns in the region and um, produce a spider diagram as a result. These are the ten, uh, the 10 indicators. I do not enter too much into the detail. We have not much time here, but basically uh, look at the second one, for example, population living in intermediate poles over the total population. Are indicators that want to show the, the, the fact that the population is distributed in more centers and so the distribution of workplaces and distribution of employed people related to the distribution of workplaces. So the factors that create, uh, drive uh, the um, mobility between the poles, not only within the poles. And then we have more more classical uh, uh, modal share or average travel distance uh, indicators. Uh, this is a slide uh, from the transferability workshop where we have used this tool with some representative of the twin cities, so some practical problem. The tool now has to be uh, used putting data uh, manually, basically. Uh, but of course, it can be improved uh, having some form of handling uh, Excel files. Uh, there is, in general, for applying the tool, there is the, the, which is one of the aspects of detecting the, the, the characteristic of the polycentric region, is the definition of what are the poles. What are the municipalities, not only the cities, but also the territory and town, the municipalities, uh, which become the centers of this multi-centric uh, territorial uh, region that we analyze. And the other point is how to add to um, information about commuting uh, for work or education uh, trips, uh, more information about the leisure trips. This is, uh, of course, particularly relevant also for regions that are touristic, for example. And there is, in general, a problem of lack of data for that. And there is the need in the future to have a more, uh, we'll say, the modern or new innovative ways for, for uh, gathering data about the mobility of people. This is uh, the spider diagram as, as, uh, as an example with the five indicators, and we have analyzing the different forms. Basic, basically, that was helpful for identifying three typology of uh, polycentric region. Uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the left, you have the star, which is the typical more, I would say, a little more monocentric region, in which there is one pole at the center, and then there are satellite towns. Uh, mm, there is uh, 
highly polycentric regional st uh, structure where all the indicators of distribution of population, the population is really distributed in, in several centers, are predominant. And finally, there are some regions where there is uh, basically no travel interdependency. So the population is distributed, but the interaction between the, uh, the cities is not so high. So are more, uh, more near to uh, rural uh, areas, this kind of region. Okay, I, I'm going to, to end in two minutes because I want just to show the future search or structure, but on this I guess uh, Aphrodite can say more is based on three days, starting at lunch, for example, of Thursday and ending at lunch of Saturday. So there is a, a, a first part, part that is uh, the diagnostic of past, present and future with the participants, then the construction of a common ground and the definition of an action plan. Uh, pros and cons compared to the conventional way of making a sum. This is the last slide. Uh, basically, the pros are that this is a, a clearly a backcasting and goal-oriented approach. It's for letting people to come together and think to a normative kind of future, something that will improve uh, sustainable mobility and can be used for uh, coordinating SAM for the world province region in this way. Uh, in this aspect, it's a more efficient process because lead to quick identification of objectives and actions uh, in, 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 in those few days. Uh, it's open to everybody in order to contribution because uh, all the key persons charge in charge are called into the process and also main stakeholders or representative of users, people that usually is not directly involved into a mission in the future of transport. Uh, but is affected by that. Uh, the cons, the contrary, uh, the disadvantages are that uh, what I said by the beginning is very strongly dependent from the quality of the mix of stakeholders that you are able to engage. So uh, it, it uh, requires a lot of work or preparation in the sense. Um, the second point connected to the first is that usually it's not easy to let people that is in charge of responsibility to take uh, three days of their time for working with others that they don't know. Uh, so you need a lot of work for convincing them of the need and the usefulness of this approach. And finally, the fact that uh, because it's highly interactive with research, there is no time for technical presentation or elaboration of, uh, of um, materials. Uh, really, the, the exchange of knowledge is based on the experience that is in the, both in the minds of the people that participate. So there is the need of a follow-up activity about evaluating, assessing the pressure protection plan, as I said before. So thanks. I hope that I was in the, in, in the timing. This is the last slide. The Polysum products that you can find are the guidelines, the data tool that I mentioned, a future search facilitation handbook, which is very detailed about how to implement future search uh, with all the rules for moderation and for handling the process. Uh, then a project evaluation report where you will can find the statistics about the results of the six texts and the final publisher report, all available on the www.samp.au uh, web, uh, website. Thank you for uh, listening. Okay, thank you, Carlo. Uh, um, I saw that there are a couple of, of questions by the participants. Uh, one is from uh, Jorg. Uh, the question was, uh, uh, is some example of a polycentric region across Europe, uh, but maybe we can uh, let him uh, participate. And, uh, I could say I, I could just say that one one example on a relatively high level scale is uh, was actually the coordinator Regione Marche because Regione Marche is a region in which the capital city Ancona is less than 100,000 inhabitants and there are uh, in, in uh, basically in one, one hour of commuting time there are several cities of uh, 20,000 30,000 inhabitants in the in the in the area just to take one example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jörg, you can, um, I, I saw that you have raised your hand, you can uh, ask something more or are you happy with the answer? 
you can speak, Jorg. Hello? Are, are you fine? We can uh, we can go to to the next question. We, well, it was more a need for clarification. On slide 11, the question was, what is uh, uh, PT trips share? I assume it is the uh, uh, modern public, 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 public transport. Public transport, yeah. Public transport, yes, because we 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 did, we made simply the, the the use of car private transport. So car public transport trips and uh, uh, no motorized trips, walking and cycling. These three 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 motor share are considered in the ten indicators. Okay, thank you. And then there is uh, another uh, question by James, but I I, I I I think it's more about the cross border SUMP. So maybe we can answer uh, to that question later. I would propose to go ahead with the, our webinar with the next presentation. So I will leave the, the screen to Aphrodite from uh, Anatoliki, the development agency of Eastern Thessaloniki's uh, local authorities. Uh, she will provide us with an insight about one of the application of the polysump um, methodology. So Aphrodite, the, the screen is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I think so. Okay, let's close this window. Uh, can you see my, my screen? Of course, I think so. Please okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening also from me. I'm Aphrodite Stamerlu from Anatoliki SA and I'm going to present you our experience uh, from uh, the Polisam project, uh, the experience of Central Macedonia region and uh, our twinning uh, region of uh, Eastern Macedonia and Thrace. Uh, our company uh, was established in 1995 and is active in the following sectors such as environment and infrastructures, energy saving and uh, renewable energy sources, human resources, promotion of innovation and technologies and support in networks operation. The stakeholders of our company are the region of Central Macedonia, nine municipalities, three chambers of commerce, local business associations and cooperatives. A few words about uh, the Central Macedonia region. Uh, Greece consists of 30 regions and the Central Macedonia region is the largest Greek region in area and the second in population after the region of Ethica. The Central Macedonia region is constituted by seven regional units and 38 municipalities with total population almost 2 million. Uh, here you can see the seven regional units of uh, Central Macedonia region. Uh, Central Macedonia region went through a period of uh, rapid industrial and economical growth that uh, shaped today's urban network dominated by the metropolitan area of Thessaloniki and complemented by smaller urban centers. Uh, and uh, Central Macedonia region has to deal with uh, a lot of mo mobility problems uh, regarding um, uh, of a common ground.
define the current uh, framework conditions such as current SAMS for municipalities, instruments for SAMS uh, um, and other um, texts about uh, sustainable mobility in the region. Uh, we found the policy contact, uh, collect uh, transport, spatial, uh, environmental, safety and economic policy documents and plans on, on a regional and uh, local level. Um, then we find the policy process, identify on how the current processes uh, uh, can develop, uh, who deve which developed uh, the plans are uh, structured. And then we find the stakeholders, the competencies, drivers, uh, barriers and possibilities in order to to create uh, our um, regions SAMP. The second step of stage one is the use of uh, the web tool as Carlos says uh, before, uh, with which uh, we profile the polycentricity and the mobility pa pa um, patterns of our region. A specific diagram which is called spider diagram is created in order to illustrate and analyze this polycentric profile of uh, our region. For the creation of this diagram, specific indicators considered for a comparative assessment towards polycentricity were calculated. The value one, um, since that the region is near to the polycentricity, and the value zero, that, uh, since that uh, the region is near to the monocentricity. As we can see for the diagram, uh, we are in the middle of polycentric and monocentric pro profile and we have the, um, the star shape uh, from the, um, according to polysamp guidelines. The second stage is the creation of a common ground and vision with the use of local future search workshops in our region. The local future search workshop was held at Agios Nikolaos, a town approximately 75 kilometers west of the city of Thessaloniki from uh, 2nd to 3rd uh, of uh, October 2013. And participants were invited from several stakeholders in the region. Uh, the final, 30, the final uh, number of our representatives uh, is uh, 35, uh, 37 participants and were from municipalities, development agencies, um, universities, Technical Chamber of Greece, the Hellenic Institute of Transport, and um, other stakeholders from the region. Regarding the organization of the workshop, uh, in the room there were six tables with numbers and colorful pens and post-its on them, uh, and um, in the sessions, uh, participants were asked individ were answered individually the corresponding questions in colorful post-its and subsequently they shared and aggregated their opinion at their table. Finally, one member of each table presented the table's answers and put the post-its on the wall. In this way, it was easy to find the similarities and the differences between the participants' subgroups. Uh, the first session is uh, about uh, the shared diagnostic uh, in the past. Looking back, during this session, participants were invited to look back 30 or 50 years on mobility in their personal life, but also at the level of their region, the whole Europe and the world. The purpose of this exercise was to share a diagnostic between all participants and analyze what they have in common and what uh, are the main differences in their assessment of the past uh, evolution of mobility. Uh, some of them uh, answered uh, that the first experience riding a bike and driving a car or uh, the first bike accidents are the most important uh, uh, events uh, in their life regarding mobility. The second session is about the present situation of mobility. Uh, during this session, participants were asked to assess the current situation of mobility and provide examples or, on good and bad practices from their region. As we can see, some of them uh, as a best practice um, present the improvement of the level of service of uh, urban public transportation in the city of Thessaloniki and the development of a sub-urban railway and uh, upgrading the international airport of Thessaloniki. On the other hand, as a bad practice uh, of uh, our uh, region is the limited law enforcement in the streets, the lack of education on mobility issues, 
the dependence of private car and the provision of good and bad practices uh, from uh, the region. The third session is about the future set search, the future trends uh, which affect uh, mobility. During this session, participants finally explored the structural trends, positive and or negative, that are going to influence uh, their field of action in the future, and they were asked to identify the main trends that could impact mobility in the next uh, 30 or 50 years. As we can see, in regional and national level, as positive is the alternative mean of transport and uh, the improvement of public transport system. Uh, and the, in European uh, level is the, the uh, ITS uh, intelligent transportation systems and the development of the uh, infrastructure for uh, rail freight. The third activity uh, with uh, one session uh, was the creation of the desired future. In this, in this activity, participants were motivated to paint or to describe the perfect future scenario concerning mobility in their region. They virtually transferred to the year uh, 2050, in which the region won the Nobel Prize for being the world's most uh, sustainable region regarding mobility. From the, the future uh, scenarios, uh, we can uh, see that all groups envisioned a more environmentally friendly region which will provide better quality of life for citizens. Uh, and moreover, the development of uh, rail transport which uh, will uh, connect the major cities of the region was reported from all the groups. Uh, in addition to that, um, people uh, uh, visualize the use of clean energy sources in order to provide the required quantity of energy. On the other hand, the major difference between the group's visions was the use or not of the private car. Some groups excluded completely the private cars from the city centers, while others preferred them. They promoted more environmentally friendly vehicles powered by renewable energy sources. The other important difference between the groups was the prohibition or not of car use and residence in the city centers. After developing their utopian uh, vision, the participants were asked to discuss their common ground and find the values, the goals, and the milestone activities that they have in common as a group, and that would allow them to take action together in the region. As we can see, the, the most important values for the participants are the quality of life and the sustainability. Uh, the goals uh, are the reduction of private car use and the opportunity of multimodal transportation and the milestone zones activities in uh, order to achieve the values and the aforementioned values and goals are the improvement of uh, urban planning and uh, infrastructures and the public transport network expansion. During uh, the second day, participants focused on the projects and actions based on the past, present, and future trends, and the visions formulated in the previous steps, as well as the various goals and milestone events agreed and prioritized. And the first uh, action list in, is generated. Uh, in the table, we can see the 12 most important actions that um, uh, our participants have um, uh, reported, and uh, these are uh, the actions uh, of the um, polysamp for the region of Central Macedonia. The um, first one is the behavioral modification and awareness raising activities, the rail network expansion and route densification, and uh, the uniform strategic planning at regional level. At the end of the uh, local future search workshop, an evaluation questionnaire on the workshop was distributed to the participants. And the aim of this um, questionnaire is uh, the assessment of the organization and the whole content of the workshop, and uh, suggestions and recommendations about the next workshops within this methodology. As we can see, the participants uh, like uh, the innovative methodology of future set search and the creative participations through, uh, participation through the interactive process of the future search methodology and the share of experiences. And uh, moreover, they liked the opportunity to contact with people 
uh, who are aware of the sustainable mobility. Uh, as, I can, as I have said before, we have organized uh, our uh, um, workshop uh, uh, in two days, so most uh, of the participants didn't like the constant pressure of time in order to um, conclude all the sessions in these two days. Uh, they have also uh, said that we can uh, make uh, local future search workshops in the fields of uh, public transportation, waste management, or other fields that are important uh, within our uh, region. The second stage uh, is about the elaboration of the action plan. Uh, in, which in this stage, the second questionnaire related to the workshop's outcomes has been sent to the local future search workshop participants. And um, from this questionnaire, we have uh, additional information related to the most appropriate key actors who could potentially play a role in designing and implementing the actions. And after that, we have meetings with these key actors for further development of the action plan and uh, find the um, appropriate uh, stakeholders in order to make our action plan be in order to make our action plan real. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have um, a lot of uh, awareness raising activities in the subject of sustainable mobility. And uh, the most important is the transfer transferability of the policy and methodology in our twinning region, uh, Eastern Macedonia and Thrace region. Uh, excuse me uh, for that, uh, just a quick question by, by one of the participants. Uh, yes. The question was, uh, what does LFSW mean? Uh, local Future Search Workshop, the methodology from uh, Local Future Search Workshop. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, now two, two slides about our uh, twinning region. Uh, in the map you can see, on the map you can see where the Eastern Macedonian Thrace uh, region uh, is stated. Uh, a representative of this region has participated to the transferability workshop in Lund uh, of the Polisamp project. Uh, the, this region is comprised uh, of 22 municipalities and the region has an extensive and established road network which serves a polycentric system of medium-sized cities and a large number of scattered uh, small settlements. Um, here we can see the, the spider diagram for our uh, twinning region. As you can see, the diagram has a Donald Duck uh, shape, as Carlos says uh, before, uh, which is polycentric region with low travel interdependency. And according to these uh, guidelines, uh, a polycentric region with this shape produces regional profiles with a large area in the right side and a smaller area in the left side. Um, another one aspect which uh, strengthens the view that our uh, region, the, our twinning region, is a polycentric region is, as we can see from the spider diagram, that uh, the average distance travel to workplace and recreation uh, are quite uh, small distances. For example, uh, for um, uh, workplace is three kilometers and for the recreation uh, destinations is uh, two kilometers which uh, are quite small distances for these uh, purposes. Um, at this time, due to economic crisis, uh, the Eastern Macedonian Trust region is not interesting to transfer the whole methodology to its region, uh, but uh, it is quite an interesting and innovative methodology which aims to develop a completed sustainable urban mobility plan at the regional level. Uh, so um, the region is only interested to evaluate the transferability of the specific actions indicated in the future search action plan of the Central Macedonia region. So taking into account the information of Central Macedonia region action plan and the needs of their region, the Eastern Macedonian Thrace region, the representative of uh, our twinning region propo proposed some actions which can be transferred uh, to his region. These action, uh, actions, as we can see, are the behavioral modification and awareness raising activities 
which also uh, was the first action in our action plan. Uh, the rail network expansion and route densification, the updated uh, of tra traffic studies and uh, development of new ones, the bicycle and pedestrian network development, the improvement of public transportation services, and of course, find finance, uh, financing instruments for uh, the whole uh, uh, infrastructure and mobility development. Thank you very much. If uh, someone has a question, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Aphrodite. Indeed, there is a question, a question from Anne Severin Ley that can speak now if you want to, to ask yourself. Hello. Hello. Uh, hi. Um, my question was that um, you talk about the central Macedonian region. I'm not so well aware of the Greece geography, but the Saloniki is an important city. And therefore, I thought it would not match the definition of a polycentric uh, region, since the Saloniki is certainly more than uh, 2,000, uh, 200,000 inhabitants. Uh, of course, we have, uh, as you can see in wait in the spider diagram, we have uh, a, a big city which uh, is uh, Thessaloniki. But we have uh, also people who travel from other cities to work um, in Thessaloniki and from Thessaloniki to other cities. So as you can see, we are in the middle of polycentric and monocentric profiles. Uh, and we find uh, we we would like to find um, uh, ways uh, to improve uh, the connection between uh, the other cities with Thessaloniki in order to be our region more uh, polycentric. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, I see there are uh, a number of questions, but we are also a little bit behind schedule. So I would propose to go ahead with the next presentation and see if in the end we manage to do to answer to the pending question or we can provide the answers uh, offline after the, the webinar is, uh, is closed. So I will uh, leave the floor to Luca that will change uh, perspective. Um, he will present uh, the uh, experience of Nova Gorizia and uh, Gorizia through the, within the, um, the Pumas project. And uh, maybe I can already ask you, um, give you uh, questions provided by a participants before. Uh, it was about uh, um, uh, cross-border SUMP developments. Uh, the question was, uh, were there any greater number of issues related to power and control when working on cross-border SUMP developments, uh, for instance, across different countries? So I'm pretty sure that you will answer to that question during your presentation. So Luca, the, the floor is yours. Okay, Luca, you can talk now. Please go, go, go ahead, Luca. Uh, okay. Okay. You, you can hear me now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would like to say hello to all participants from my side as well. I'm Luca Mladenovic from Urban Planning Institute of the Republic of Slovenia. Um, what I will present is a part of the project Pumas that it's ending in the next month and I would like to use this opportunity to to invite you all to the final conference that will take next week in Venice so if you still have time um, you're still welcome to join us. Uh, within the project uh, we were testing the SUMP uh, methodology 
on seven pilot pilot areas. They were of different scales, uh, different settings. Um, our was a cross-border SEMP, and for today's seminar, I think the Vienna example is interesting as well. It's a, it's a corridor SUMP. It's between the city of Vienna and Schwechat, where the uh, Vienna airport is. So it's again across the border of administrative uh, area, um, and it's kind of a corridor, a strong transport corridor. Uh, but today I will present Nova Gorica and Gorizia um, SUMP. Um, the, the region it's not probably well known in, in the European circles. It's the border between Slovenia and Italy. The border it's here on the slide with, with, the, red, with the red line. Um, there is the Italian historic city of Gorizia and across the border it's a Slovenian city that was founded in the 50s, Nova Gorizia. Nova Gorica. Um, Gorizia has a good 30,000 inhabitants, Nova Gorica has approximately the same, uh, but when preparing the SUMP we joined uh, smaller surrounding municipalities as well that have as well combining uh, around 30,000 inhabitants so that uh, all together we have around 100,000 people living in the area that we were working on. Uh, the area is working as a functional region so people are are using all this area, are, are commuting to work to, to Gorizia or Nova Gorica, they are shopping cross-border, they are um, going to school, so it's kind of uh, becoming one integral part even though there was a border here a few years ago. Um, some short background, uh, in Slovenia we don't have any tradition of strategic transport planning, so this topic is kind of new, we are still searching on how to how to uh, develop it and how to incorporate it into our planning system. Uh, regionally, Slovenia has no has no official regions. We know that Italy has quite uh, uh, well developed levels, uh, the the provinces, the regions, and then the cities, municipalities. So this was kind of. Uh, uh, um, hard to approach w without w without the l missing levels in Slovenia. Um, the cross-border element, I, I explained a bit about it as uh, already. Uh, the two cities were growing with a border for 50 years, but then in 2007 when Slovenia joined Schengen and before EU, the border was removed. Uh, so the cities were able to kind of merge together uh, the border is physically away, it's not existing anymore, but it's very present in people's minds. They are still having uh, a lot of thoughts about what to do, how to approach this, this border element. Um, the, the region has a very high motorization rate for Slovenian standards, um, but there is a trend of integration of functions between the two cities and uh, kind of trend of growth of sustainable mobility. So this was kind of a good point for us uh, when we approached the site. Uh, both, both cities, uh, Nova Gorica and Gorizia, that are kind of the core of the region, had some sort of transport plans, uh, but both of the plans expired. So they were outdated, uh, they were kind of a good basis to build on, but uh, outdated. Uh, the smaller municipalities, uh, don't have any transport strategies and very weak uh, administration, so they don't have capacities to prepare one. So our action was quite uh, quite positively accepted because this was the opportunity for them to get uh, a strategic document. There was a lot of missing experiences in some key elements of the SUMP planning. Um, very poor integra integration between sectors, so transport planning and spatial planning are or were not integrated. Um, the decision making transparency was kind of vague. Uh, the main decisions were not accepted very clearly. Uh, stakeholders and citizen engagement, it's kind of a topic that, that still needs a lot of, of development. Um, and there is no monitoring and evaluation mechanisms in place. 
so we put a lot of focus on this uh, for for the next period. Um, what the pilot action was about? It was about development of a sustainable urban mobility plan following the established uh, SUMP guidance for the functional and cross-border region. Um, as we kind of researched, this methodology was not used in this scale before, so um, we had to test and find our own solutions for some problems. Um, innovative aspect uh, for that matter was uh, the, to kind of approach the whole functional area, even though it spans over borders, uh, municipal and, and national borders. Uh, but we think this topic is very important and it's transfer transferable to many other regions uh, as well in Slovenia and in other, in other European uh, situations. Uh, the development process followed the classic SUMP methodology. Uh, it started uh, kind of formally in autumn 2012 but officially in 2013. The draft document was ready in spring 2015, but then delayed because of the local elections. I think this is an important, uh, important point when developing such long-term documents that uh, local elections can stop the whole process for half a year or even more. Uh, in our case, almost for a full year, so the polit political uh, discussion started now. Uh, almost a year after the draft was ready and uh, uh, I'm hoping that the document will be officially confirmed in the next weeks. Um, so the result was this document, um, the SUMP document, as you see it's, it was designed well, it was written by, rewritten by an agency because our written language is kind of uh, to dedicated to experts, so we want to have wanted to have a document that will be uh, accessible to, to you as well to other experts, not from the transport field, but as well to to general public. So uh, we had the document written for people to to understand. Uh, the main the main points of the documents are the five pillars of the of the SUMP, uh, the, the pillars on which the, the measures will, will be implemented in the next years. So this, these measures are planning, uh, so improvements of, of the planning system and then by transport modes, walking, cycling, public transport and motorized traffic. Uh, for each of these fields, um, the, the vision for future was developed. Um, and the goals were set and then for each pillar there was a list of measures developed uh, which of the seven municipalities will be involved in each measure, estimated costs, responsibilities and time frame. I think this is kind of a benefit of a otherwise very strategic document to have as well the implementational aspects, the, the actual measures that, that come out of the whole um, process. Um, main barriers we, we witness, um, two types of municipalities, uh, probably with the polysump this was obvious as well that urban and rural uh, municipalities work very differently, uh, their administration is very differently organized, their needs and demands are very different so uh, they kind of have difficulties understanding that they are part of the same system. They see their local problems, but they don't see the system's problems as their own. Um, we had two legal systems, Slovenian and Italian. Uh, we had to find kind of ways to, to approach this. Um, some difficulties appeared. Uh, the legal status of the document was not clear for a long time because uh, Italy has some sort of transport documents. Um, uh, in the, their legislation, Slovenia don't have it, so we had to find a way for this. Um, two languages, this was a barrier that we kind of underestimated. We hope that the work will be uh, carried out in English, but the both administrations work in their local languages and um, all the main documents had to be translated from Slovenian to Ital Italian, from Italian to Slovenian all the important meetings needed a translator, so 
this can be a big barrier. Uh, then different traditions of planning and different administrative structures. Uh, the responsibilities of specific departments are different in Slovenia than in Italy, so navigating through this hierarchy was, uh, was interesting for us and took us as well quite a lot of time. And the type of document, it's a regional document and it's a strategic long-term document. Uh, it was quite hard to communicate. Uh, maybe not so much to experts, but more to, to general public. We wanted to involve the, the citizens in the process, but it was hard to engage them in the debate. Uh, citizens are more uh, focused on their local, specific, small-scale problems. They are not able to, to think in the, in the wider scale, on the long term, and uh, in the wider space. Um, but there were some drivers that kind of helped us uh, with, with the process. Um, the awareness of needs for common actions were present really uh, from the start. So um, on the both sides of the border, people are aware that planning has to be, has to be integrated, that one decision that it's made in Slovenia has influence on Italy as well and vice versa. So uh, this uh, this awareness was present. Uh, there, there were some elements of tradition of working together and some uh, well-established forms of cooperation. Uh, for instance, three mayors of this area are meeting already regularly, discussing the problems they have, not only on transport, uh, but as well on other topics. So this is kind of a well-established um, form that, that, helped, that helped us. Um, then European projects, ongoing European projects are uh, a great source for financing uh, measures and studies and uh, they are kind of pushing the, the, the municipalities to make steps into this in, in the right direction. And of course potential for new projects. The horizon is now opening and um, a lot of municipalities are now stepping up with uh, ideas for, for new activities that came out of the, this process. Um, during this time, a possibility for national funding appeared as well, and I think this was a big push, so municipalities that were only partially uh, interested in what we were doing then became interested, and I think this is an important point for everybody who wants to um, develop SUMPs, the, the possibilities to actually finance the measures, it's a strong driver. Um, I listed here a few key messages that came out of the whole project, out of all the seven pilots developed within the project, but these five are relevant for, for our conference today. So one is that the SUMP guidelines form a frame of framework for action, but um, it's kind of, you, you don't have to take it too, too strongly, too seriously. Uh, when you adopt to a specific situation, the methodology can be changed. Some steps are maybe um, in different order. Some steps can be uh, carried out parallel. Um, some steps can be um, extended or some really shortened to a minimum. So. Um, I see the guidelines as, as, as um, kind of a framework, but not the actual plan. Um, then there is still need for specific guidance on some topics that are important in the SUMP process. For instance, citizen engagement, it's one such topic. Um, there was a lot done already, but for our situation we had difficulties finding um, literature on good examples on how to approach this. Uh, then a need for SUMP audit framework. Um, we tested the SUMP methodology on many scales and the question was what, what then all is an SUMP and what it's not? Where is the border? Can you use the methodology on a scale of a measure? We tested this and yes, you can use it, but is this an SUMP or is this a measure? So. Um, we have to develop some sort of framework to, to evaluate the, the SUMPs or documents that are claimed to be SUMPs and decide whether they are or not. 
Um, more data is still needed on impacts of SVMPs. We are still approaching municipalities that are not sure uh, what they will gain uh, if they go into the process. Uh, they think that this is expensive, that the sustainable uh, urban measures are kind of uh, expensive and not efficient, so we have to collect the data to prove that they are, um, they are effective, they have uh, positive benefits. And then we have to build on changing the tradition in strategic transport planning. Uh, this change is going on um, from my experience very slowly, uh, but if we look for the last uh, five years, I think the change is there and we have to build it even further. Um, this is all from my side. Thank you. And now I'm open to questions as well. Okay, thank you, Luca. Uh, just a, uh, a message for the audience. You mentioned this. Sorry. Um, especially for the ones who want to learn more about the Pumas projects and results. Uh, there will be a conference, the final conference, next week in Venice. Uh, I hope you can see the, the link where you can uh, find more information and where you can register if you have the chance to go to Venice, which is not uh, such a bad city, I would say. Then, uh, having said that, there are a number of questions, a lot, I would say, so that means that uh, this kind of uh, uh, issues and approaches uh, raised some uh, interest in the audience. In principle, we are behind the schedule, but if the speakers agrees, agree, we can take uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, to provide some answers, if you agree. Uh, what we cannot uh, answer now, we will uh, answer uh, by written later. So I will try to go in order uh, if I don't get lost. If for, there are questions for uh, the three speakers, I would say, so both the experiences. Uh, the first question was by uh, Jorg Gomez. Uh, that was, I think, uh, where for the speakers from the Polysum experience. Question, question is, uh, in terms of the polycentric region approach, what will be the difference between uh, Central Macedonia and Flanders? In my opinion, a much denser area uh, with a real polycentric territorial structure. I don't know if uh, Carlo or Aphrodite can answer to that question. Okay, I can answer. Okay, uh, Carlo speaking. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually, <coughs> actually, uh, uh, these questions uh, uh, raise also <coughs> a clarification about um, the, uh, the fact that I said also at the beginning that the approach per se being an approach for uh, letting uh, <coughs> people and experts and uh, decision makers and stakeholders from different uh, organizations and different places to work together can be applied to the to uh, an urban functional area with uh, a, a more dominant city at the center, uh, as it was the, the case of, uh, of Thessaloniki, for example. It can be applied, uh, as it is, has been applied, uh, for example, in regional market to a truly uh, polycentric city. Um, Basically, I think the main difference is the, uh, who is the initiator of the process, because in the monocentric, uh, in the more monocentric city, typically the culture, the transport planning, the agency is in the center of the, in the central city, and usually the aim is to make uh, uh, a kind of monocentric city more, more polycentric. I know, for example, that also Milan in Italy as a policy for a more polycentric development in the in the province, for example, in a truly polycentric city, uh, often uh, lacks uh, one initiator because really uh, the capital city is not so dominant, and uh, the cities are are usually more uh, dispersed. Uh, in our experience, uh, perhaps 
uh, we could be a problem for C for areas as Flanders, for example. I would be curious to know. Uh, in our experience, there are, there is also a scale of smaller uh, regions, as it was Rhine Valley, Rhine Alps in Austria, that was uh, made by 29 municipalities in the in the west part of of, um, of Austria. Uh, the fact that they were a smaller municipality created the more sense of commonality between them. It was more easy for them to apply the, the approach, for example. Thank okay, thank, thank you. Uh, there is another question also regarding the polycentric model. Uh, Marcello Guayan asked, can you please give a broadly adapt adopted definition of a functional urban area to be compared with the polycentric model? The, the definition that I have in mind is a definition that is based also on some, uh, on, uh, um, some work done by the by Eurostat, a more technical definition, and by the ESPON program. And in that program, there are uh, several projects that are in that, and are based on uh, on the limitation of uh, um, uh, daily travel uh, areas of commuting flows. So basically, are areas where there is a critical mass of flows connecting the poles towards uh, to a center, uh, and it's based on on, on this kind of uh, st uh, statistical uh, analysis of daily uh, commuting flows and the intensity of daily commuting flows connecting with the cities. And this applies also for uh, for the polycentric uh, concept because uh, basically uh, it, it is relevant the polycentric concept when there is a relevant share of people that. Uh, 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 sleep in one uh, in one town and works in another. When the when the when this share is very low, the concept of course is not uh, it's not not so useful. Okay, uh, I hope that uh, the answer makes uh, Marcelo happy. I see that uh, yeah, he has raised the again the question. But let, uh, but please, Marcelo, let us know if uh, you are happy with the answer or you need some more opening of the, the question. Um, then there was uh, uh, Dirk Washer asking, I get, I'm not sure if uh, to which speaker, uh, has there been any considerations to link transport of uh, individual travelers, commuters, with the transport transport of rural wood, for instance, regional food in and out the city? Not sure uh, to, to, to which uh, case study this question was directed. I don't know if any speaker want to answer. We can uh, think and provide an answer later on this. Uh, let's uh, go to the next one. Uh, that was again from Jorg Gomez. Um, uh, I, uh, that is related to the um, cross-border experience of Nova Goritz and Gorizia. Uh, what a great example this one was the remark. Do these two cities have come together under the form of a euro region or even a, a euro euro metrol like the case of Lille, Cortic and Tournai? Uh, Luca, can you answer to um, that question? Yes, the two cities have established a European uh, cooperation zone. I don't know how, how it is exactly the, in English. Um, so they, they established a, an official body that coordinates um, the some activities. Um, they have some difficulties with it because um, the body uh, has a kind of uh, formal political structure, but no 
uh, no power to implement actual decisions. So it needs further development, but I think first steps in the, into direction of, of merging the administrations have been done. Um, they were not easy, um, so <laughs> they're taking quite a lot of time. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, let's uh, go to the next one. That was uh, again for Luca uh, by Anna Severin Lay. The question is, do you think the future search methodology would have helped in your pilot area? Um, the methodology used in PolySump with experts? No, the, the future search. Uh, that was was this the methodology presented in the in the first presentation with for yeah. the development of common vision probably um, yes um, probably it would but we had a lot of as I understand the methodology uh, the key the key thing is to get all the relevant stakeholders to sit in one room for uh, some period of time and and discuss and this was a big problem for us to, to organize such meeting because uh, there were seven municipalities um, and uh, we tried several times to get all the key stakeholders to one place to discuss and were not really successful. We managed to get a few of them. <clears throat> so um, if there were methods to convince people that this is important and to kind of get them in the same room, this would work, but otherwise we had to uh, use more conventional methods. Um, for instance, we prepared a draft vision and distributed it or went to visit one by one all the municipalities and discussed it uh, and then kind of update the document with the findings that we had. But um, I think that the methodology, the future, future, how, how is it called, future search, um, it's it's interesting, but I see problems implementing it. Okay, uh, well, if you want to answer everything, you can. Uh, I open the, your mic. I don't know if you want to, to reply. Well, uh, thank you, Luca. And anyway, I go to Venice next week. So. Okay, so there will be okay. time to discuss and, uh, okay. Um, next question was again for Luca uh, by, sorry, for, from uh, Ricardo Souza. Uh, I question is, how did the budget constraints influence the, the development of the action plan and its measures? Does actual region or municipalities budgets compares to action plan for recasted needs? I don't know if it is clear enough as a um, question. Yeah, probably how, how the budget uh, the influenced the, the development or the selection of measures. Um, well, w it, it had influence, but I, I wouldn't, the budget was not the main topic. Uh, we, we developed the first list of measures from the uh, vision and, and goals of the, the whole document and then communicated it with, with every municipality. So there were several aspects that influenced this uh, decision uh, of the final measures. Uh, budget was of course a topic that we discussed but as well the relevance and uh, some topics that are more important for some municipalities than the others I think had a bigger role in, in selection. Uh, but I, I have to say that we were not, uh, not discussing very expensive measures. We tried to avoid those. Uh, we focused on uh, more soft measures, on org uh, organizational measures and um, avoided uh, building a lot of new infrastructure or even discussing it. So maybe this, this is why um, it didn't have so much influence. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are really in the end. There is a last question and uh, again for, for Luca. Apparently the cross-border experience uh, was very draw a, a 
big interest. The question is from Fabio Tomasi. And the question is, are Goritz and Nova Goritz going to improve independently the same SUMP or are they going to approve two individual but integrated SUMPs? Yeah, that, that, that is a, v a very good question, very, very relevant in the situation where we are. So, um, the regional SUMP will um, remain kind of as a strategic document for the whole area. But uh, Gorizia in Italy, it's updating their uh, transport plan required by legislation um, as a result of this SUMP. So they will develop their own kind of transport planning document, which will be based on, on the cross-border SUMP. And Nova Gorizia as well is thinking about it because we were not able to touch all very specific problems Nova Gorica has in this uh, regional document, so they uh, they will develop their own local very specific SMP for the next probably five years. So yeah, uh, very good questions and question and this is this is one of the important things I think with planning on this scale. Okay, thank you very much, Luca. Thank you to all the speakers and all the participants. Uh, I have no further questions now, but please everybody feel free to ask uh, uh, some, uh, any question, any uh, need of clarification, just send me an email. My contact details are over there. In the next days we will, uh, as I said, uh, upload uh, all, the docu all the documents uh, presented uh, today on the Civitas website, I mean the presentation, the recording of the of the webinar. Um, I think and uh, I, I believe that uh, all uh, you can um, go through all relevant materials of both uh, projects and experiences, both the Polysump and the Pumas project by mean of uh, um, uh, by downloading uh, relevant materials from each uh, project website. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, that's all I would say. Don't uh, miss the opportunity and consider to register to the group. And uh, for any question, you can use also uh, the uh, online tools uh, that are the Civitas Interactive on the Civitas website and the Civitas Urban Mobility LinkedIn group. That is really uh, almost all from my side. Uh, just uh, a final remark that uh, a, a questionnaire about this uh, uh, webinar will be circulated um, later and please uh, provide our feedback so that we can improve uh, or we can uh, um, feed some other topics uh, to, to our set of uh, events and uh, opportunities for the Civitas members. Okay, thank you very much and uh, goodbye to everybody.